Welcome back to Monster Tamer, a 2D Pokemon-like RPG created Phase 3. Previously, we worked on adding in our title scene, and we focused on adding in a new class for creating 9 slice game objects. If you missed the previous videos, there will be links in the video description to the source code up to this point, as well as complete source code for this video. There will also be a link to the previous videos if you'd like to catch up, so let's get started. Alright, so now that we have the logic in place for our title scene, what we need to do next is start building out our option scene, so then that way we can connect that to our title scene and to our battle scene. So to go ahead and get started, what we're going to do is we'll go ahead and create our new scene. Uh, so let's go ahead and come to our source code, go into our scenes folder, and let's make a new file. We're going to call this option scene.js. And what we'll do is let's copy our export of our class, and let's copy our constructor. And then let's go ahead and copy the top part of our create method with our console log statement. And what we'll do is let's close our create method. We'll close our class and then let's grab our imports. So we'll grab our scene keys and we'll grab the phaser import. And then let's go ahead and update the name of our class. We're going to call this option scene. And we'll update our reference here. And then let's jump over to scene keys so we can define our new scene. So we're just going to copy this. And we'll do our options scene. And we'll update our value. And then finally, what we'll want to do is we'll want to go ahead and jump over to our config. Uh, so our main.js, we have our phaser config. And we'll want to go ahead and add our new scene to our game instance. Uh, so this is going to be our options scene. And it'll be an instance of our options uh, scene class. All right, if we jump back to option scene, uh, let's go ahead and fix our scene keys now that we have our new property, and we'll go ahead and save. So now just to validate everything's working, let's go ahead and jump over to our title scene. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna connect our options menu option to our option scene. So if we come down to our code uh, where we have our to-do method, let's go ahead and change our scene keys to be scene keys and our option scene. And we'll go ahead and remove our to-do, we'll go ahead and save. And what should happen is we go ahead and select options. We should transition to our new scene. It'll be black because there's nothing on it. But just to make sure it's working, let's go ahead and pop open our console. And we should see our console log for our option scene uh, being created. All right, so to make things a little bit easier while testing and developing our scene, let's go ahead and open up our preload scene. And we're going to go ahead and update the scene we start to no longer be title for the time being. We'll go ahead and go right to our options scene. All right, so now that we have our basic options scene uh, in place, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at what we're going to be building. And so for our options scene, what we're going to end up doing is we're going to create some options for our text speed. So this is going to be how fast our text is going to animate when it's shown to the player. We're going to have our battle scene, which is going to determine if we have our animations playing uh, when we start our battle or if we're going to skip them. And this is going to replace our config that we had for this. Uh, so we're not going to use battle style for the time being, but uh, what this is used for, like Pokemon games, is when you're battling another trainer, uh, after you defeat one of their monsters, uh, you would have the option to switch to another monster. But by setting this off, it will automatically continue the battle and not prompt you for that. Then we're going to have some settings tied to our sound and our volume. So we can disable all sound in our game, or we can change the overall level of the sound that's playing. And then finally, we're going to have an option for uh, displaying, uh, changing our menu colors. And then for some of our UI menus that we show in our game, uh, we'll use this to change the basic color. And so what we're going to go ahead and do is we're just going to go ahead and just add some comments for what we need to go ahead and build in our scene uh, based on this. So the first thing we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to create our main options container. And so our main options container is going to be this main container right here that houses all of our options, so all of our text game objects, and our cursor uh, for moving up and down. So then we need to go ahead and create our main option sections. And so what this is going to be, this is going to be all of our available options and then our close button. So like adding in the text for text speed, battle scene, battle style, and we're going to go ahead and align all those on our left. 
Once we do that, we need to go ahead and create our actual options for each of the options. And so we'll create our text speed options. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and copy this. And so after we do our text speed, then we need to go ahead and do our battle scene options. After our battle scene, we'll have our battle style options. And then we'll have our sound options. Followed by our volume options. And then we'll have our frame for our menu. Uh, so just go ahead and copy this. And we'll have our frame options. And then finally for our option scene, uh, we're going to have this details container down here. And what that's going to do is it's going to show informative text to the player as they navigate through the various options so they know what they actually do. Uh, so the example here is when you're on text speed, we would say choose one of the three text display speeds. All right, so now that we've planned out what we need to do in our option scene, uh, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and jump back to our code and we'll start creating our main container. So to go ahead and do this, we're gonna add two new properties to our class. We're gonna use one to keep track of our phaser three game object for our container. And then we're gonna have our nine slice uh, instance. And so what we'll do is we'll do our main container and we'll make this private and we'll have our nine slice main container. And then we'll go ahead and just add in our types real quick. And so our main container will be our phaser game object. And then we just need to go ahead and import nine slice. Then what we'll go ahead and do is we're going to add our init method. So similar to what we did back in our title scene, we're going to go ahead and create our nine slice instance inside our init method. Uh, so we'll just go ahead and copy our create method and we will rename this init. We'll update our method name. And then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and create our nine slice instance. We'll do this, our nine slice main container equals a new nine slice class. And then we need to go and provide our configuration. So we'll do our corner cut. We'll do 32 pixels. Our texture manager will be this, our systems manager, our textures manager. And then for our asset key, uh, we're going to use our UI asset keys and our menu background. So then what we can do is down our create method we can go ahead and create our container. So under our main options container, what we'll do is we'll do this. We'll do our main container is equal to our nine slice main container dot create nine slice container. We'll pass in our phaser three scene. And then we need to go ahead and provide our width and we wanna go ahead and provide our height. And so for our width, we're going to dynamically calculate this based on the width of our scene that we're currently showing. And so we're going to store this in a new variable that we've not created yet. We'll call it option menu width. And then for our height, uh, we'll go ahead and do 432 uh, pixels. All right, and then so for our option menu width, what we're going to do is we're going to grab our width and our height from our scale property. And so this is going to give us our width and our height of our phaser scene. And then from there, we can define our option menu width to be equal to our width and we'll subtract 200. And so what that's going to do is going to give us the overall width of our scene and then we'll have some padding on both sides. So then, uh, because we want that padding, we'll need to go ahead and update our position on our main container. So what we'll do is we'll do our main container, we're gonna call set X, and for our X, we're gonna go ahead and do half of our 200 and then we'll call the set Y and we're going to use 20 just so we have some padding at the top of our scene. All right, so the next thing for us to do is we're going to go ahead and create our menu options. And so what we're going to do is we're going to make a new variable and we'll make an array. We're going to call this menu options. And inside this array, we're going to provide all of our text strings that we want to render out to our canvas element. And so we're going to have our text speed. We'll have battle scene, battle style, sound, volume, menu color, and then our close button text. And then for what we'll want to do is we're going to iterate over this array of our text strings and we'll go ahead and create text game objects for each of these and then add them into our container. And so what we'll do is we'll do our menu options and we're gonna do for each. And then for each of these, we will have our text and then we'll, we'll also go ahead and grab the index. And so we'll be using the index to go ahead and dynamically calculate our Y value so we know how far down to render this text game object. 
And then what we're going to want to go ahead and do in this loop is we'll want to go ahead and define our X and Y values. And then real quick, what we'll do is outside our menu options, we're going to make a new variable and we're going to call this menu options position. We're going to set this equal to an object. And so on this object, we still have our X and Y coordinates of where we want our position to start at. So we'll have 25 for X. For our Y start value, we're going to go ahead and do 55. And then we want to do an increment. We'll have Y increment, and this will be 55. And so what we're going to do with this object, we're going to use this in calculating our X and Y values for each of our game objects. So for our X value, this is just going to be equal to our menu options position dot X. And so all these will be aligned in the, in the same position. Then for our Y value, what we want to go ahead and do is we'll grab our menu options position and we're going to grab our Y start value. So this is where we're going to start at. Then we want to go ahead and increment this value based on our index times that increment that we define. And so if we do our menu options position and we go ahead and grab our Y increment, and we're going to multiply this by our index. And so what this will do is for our first index, it'll be zero. And so we'll start with our first text game object at 55. On our next iteration, we'll have 55 plus 55, and then so on and so forth. And we'll keep moving down our, as we make new game objects. Then we need to go ahead and actually create our text game object. So we'll do const and we'll do our text game object. And this is going to be equal to this.add.text. And so for here, we can provide our X and our Y and then our option. So this will be our text string. And now we need to go ahead and provide our text style they want to apply. And so real quick, we're going to jump over to our title scene. We'll come to the top of our class. Let's go ahead and grab our const here. And we will go ahead and we don't need to export this. So let's just go ahead and remove that. And while we're in here, let's go ahead and actually remove that export from our title scene as well. And then what we'll want to do is let's add our import for our Kenny font. And now we're going to go ahead and call this our options text style. And so for our text style, what we'll go ahead and do is we're going to use white for all of our colors. And then we'll go ahead and keep it at 30 pixels. So then on our text game object, let's go ahead and update that styling to reference that object. And then after we create our text game object, let's go ahead and add it to our container. So we'll do this. We'll reference our main container and we'll do add. And we're going to add our brand new text game object that we just created. So now we save and refresh. We should see right away all of our text options sections are now defined uh, inside our container here. All right, so now we've defined all of our sections. What we actually need to do now is create our text game objects with all of the available options that are available for the player to select. So what we'll go ahead and do is we're going to create a couple of group objects for each of these different sections. And then inside those groups, that's where we'll go ahead and we'll add in our various text game objects. And so what we'll do, uh, let's come up to the top of our class and let's start adding a few new properties. And so the first thing we'll do is we'll do our text speed option text game object objects. And then real quick, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and add in our type. And so for these, these are going to be our group game object. And now what we'll do is we'll copy this. We'll go ahead and update our variable name. So instead of text speed, we will have our battle scene option text game objects. Then we'll have our battle style option text game objects. And then we'll have our sound options. All right, so with our new groups defined, what we'll do is we'll come down to our create method. Let's go ahead and create those group game objects and we'll add our text game objects to it. So for our first one, we'll have our text speed. So we'll do this, our text speed option text game objects, and we'll set that equal to this.add.group. Then inside our group, we'll go ahead and add in our children. And so for our children, we're going to do this.add. We'll have our text game object. And now we'll go ahead and define our positioning. So we'll have 420 and we'll have 75. And for our first option, we're going to have slow. And then we'll go ahead and use our options uh, text style. So then what we can do is let's copy that line and we'll go ahead and paste it two more times for our three options. And now we just need to go ahead and update our X value. Uh, so we're going to have 590 and then we'll go ahead and have 760. And for our value, our strings, we'll have mid and we'll have fast. 
And if we save, we should see those options appear in our scene. So then what we'll do next is let's copy that. We'll go ahead and paste it. We'll go ahead and update our variable. Uh, so we'll have our battle scene, option text game objects. Then uh, we're going to need two of these. So we'll go ahead and remove one. And then so for our positioning, we'll do 420 and 590. But then for our Y, we're going to go ahead and bump it down to 130 for both of these. Then we'll have on and we'll have off. Let's go ahead and copy that block of code. We'll paste it. And so now we'll have our battle style, option text game objects. We'll have the same X. We need to go ahead and update our Y value to 185 for both of those. And let's go ahead and set this to set. And then we'll have shift. And now we just need to do our sound option. So we'll go ahead and copy. We'll paste one more time. And let's go ahead and do our sound, option text game objects. We'll have our same X values, and now we just need to do 240 for our Y positions, and we'll have on, and we will have off. So we go ahead and save. We should see for our first few sections, we have our available options that the player can select from. All right, with that, that actually brings this video to an end. Uh, in our next video, we're going to continue working on our option scene. So as a reminder, there's a link in the description of the video to the clear source code for this video. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content. If you did enjoy the video, please consider liking the video and hitting the bell icon to be notified when the next video in the series is released. For more great Phaser 3 content, please show links on your screen now.